Today, my brother and Paul mentioned about the 93% that goes into communication. I'm here to talk about the remaining 7%. And perhaps that's a fair trade given our relative levels of talent. Anyhow, how to write a speech effectively and quickly? All of us have hit writer's block at some point or another. And sometimes we sit down to write a speech, we don't know what to write about. And sometimes weeks pass and the VP education is chasing us and yet we fail to deliver a speech. We've all been there. So I will very quickly some share some of the tips that have enabled Achha, me to, nahin, to, to come, up, come up with speeches at the at a one day notice, at a half day notice, at a two hour notice, and even at a 15 minute notice, ex tempore. There is no magic to it, absolutely. I'm not claiming that I possess some extraordinary powers. All of you can do it. So here are some of my tips. First of all, maintain a list of ideas. Anything interesting that you see, note it down, note it down. Whether it becomes a speech or a story doesn't really matter. You can maintain it on pen and paper, or you can maintain it as a notebook on your cell phone. This is the most effective because you have it on you all the time during office, during your commute, at your home, in a social gathering, anything interesting that you see, any interesting word or phrase that you hear, any interesting concept that you hear, you should maintain a book of ideas. Secondly, read, read, and read. There's no shortcut to it. The more you read, the more easily you can write well. The more you read, the more ideas you have. The more you read, the more knowledge you have. Thirdly, let the first draft write itself. When you're writing a speech, just go with the flow and write the first draft. Don't think about structure. Don't think about quality. Don't think about language because this is the speech that is manifesting itself directly from your mind to the paper or to the keyboard. Don't interrupt it. Because if you will interrupt it, then perhaps you won't be able to finish it. Trust me, I speak from experience. So let it write itself. Better still, you can use voice notes or you can use audio dictation. Nowadays, in, in, in fact, on phones, the dictation has become so good that you can just say what you want and it will write it down. It is important to write a speech, make no mistake, but it can be written by hand, by a keyboard, by voice dictation, or even in the form of voice notes. The medium is purely your choice. But trust me, if you try dictation, if you try voice notes, you will discover the magic that you're speaking and speaking and speaking without having to consult notes. And when you record it like that, you will automatically record the style of delivery that you plan. Again, that's just a suggestion. You can write it down or you can dictate it. Go for elegance rather than eloquence. This is something sometimes you all miss. Using fancy words is no sign of accomplishment. In fact, using simple language that is elegant and effective and heart touching that is the sign of a great writer. Pick any great writer throughout history and you will see that their language is not their merit. Their flow, their thoughts, their ideas, their structures, that is their merit. And sometimes their simplicity is their merit. Again, just look at the World Championship speeches this year. Was there a single speech that you failed to understand was there a single speech that contained even one word that you did not quite get? I don't think so. Because those speakers, they practice hundreds of times and throughout the world, they practice to various audience. And through this process, they remove any barriers to communication. And one of the barriers to communication is language. Sometimes inability to convey your meaning can come through either very good language or sometimes bad language. Sometimes good language can get in your way. So when you've drafted a speech, read it again and ask yourself whether a 
15 year old kid will understand it? If the answer is no, perhaps you need to revise it because remember, English is not our first language. And even when we speak in our local language, for example, if I speak in Urdu or if I speak in Hindi or Tamil or any other language or Pashto, that language might not be the first language or even the second language of some member of the audience. So it needs to be simple enough to be understood. Then be your own voice. You know, the words that I hate the most, and that's a personal thing. The words I hate the most while listening to the speech, as Einstein so rightly said, or someone very rightly said, or Mr. or Ms. X, Y said, said, and I quote, why? Why are you quoting other people? You are there to convey your own meaning. If you need to end your speech at a quote, I'm sorry. You are not convinced in your own thoughts. If you need someone else's words to convey your meaning, I'm sorry. You haven't distilled them enough. So please consider. Again, this is a personal pet peeve. It has nothing to do with those masters. You can quote if you want to quote. But I hate quotations. Because these are someone else's words. They haven't lived your life. In fact, wait a minute. I, yeah. They haven't lived your life, right? You have lived your life. And you, your experience is unique to yourself. So why would a quote by Elon Musk or Jack Ma or Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or even Mother Teresa, why would that be relevant to your life? By all means, use quotes. But please, and that's my sincere advice, perhaps not use them in opening or conclusions, perhaps not make them the foundation of your speech because we want to listen to you, not someone else's words coming through you. So again, this is just intended to be motivational, to drive you towards thinking for yourself. Don't rely on others' words. And yes, while writing a speech, if you think about a quote and you feel that it fits very well into your narrative, then by all means, use the quote. But starting with a quote or leaving the audience with a quote, think about it. If you're leaving the audience with a quote, what are you doing? Are you leaving them with your voice or someone else's voice? So please reconsider this practice of using quotes. And uh, over the past years, ever since I've uh, been very vocal about it, at least in my home club, I've seen that people now rely less on quotes. And what's the end product? They come up with the quotes of their own. And sometimes those quotes are even better than the quotes we all like to quote. So be confident enough to come up with your own quotes, your own idioms, your own adages. Trust me, your life is a treasure trove of experiences. It's a treasure trove of idioms, it's a treasure trove of adages. For example, something that, you, that was said to you by your father or mother or your sibling or friend, that can be as valid as quote as any other quote. But the difference would be that this will be relevant exactly to your life and you will believe in it and you will be more convinced and that will show in your speech. And finally, when you've written the speech, how do you practice it? How do you deliver it? My answer is read it five times, six times, 10 times while with the timer. And after the sixth or seventh time, trust me, you will discover that you remember most of the speech. And even if you don't, then write the bullet points, take a keyword from each paragraph and write it down with hand, not with a keyboard, with hand. Make a big placard out of those key points. And you can use that placard even while you're delivering the speech. I'm not advocating reading, I'm just advocating reading through a placard, large words, that form the key points of your speech. You know what that will do? That will allow you to stay on track, that will allow you to remember the structure of your speech, at the same time allowing you the freedom 
to go here and there because i don't know about you i cannot remember a speech exactly and if i do try to memorize a speech exactly word for word then that is trouble for me because if i forget a single word then i lose track of the whole speech so those were some of the tips uh, about how to write a speech effectively and quickly and if you practice these tips enough trust me and i'm promising you because i have lived these tips you will be able to write a speech at one hour's notice at least over to you toastmaster of the day